welcome to the Faithful You YouTube channel. My name's Hazel and I'm coming to you mid Wales. This is a fibre related podcast where I'll be talking to you about all things knitting, crochet, spinning, weaving, natural dyes, acid dyes, anything to do with wool. Uh, it's a lovely day here, the sun's shining again. Um, we've not had much rain for the last 12 weeks. Um, but we've had an awful lot of sunshine. It's been so nice, so we've been able to spend plenty of time in the garden, plenty of time sitting outside doing the things that I enjoy most, which is spinning, weaving and dyeing, which is what I'd like to talk to you about today. Um, I've brought some natural dyes along with me, which I just thought I would show you. These are some of the colours that I've achieved from the plants that I've been using in the garden. I had some beautiful colours this year, um, some very striking colours. Um, yeah, so this one is cochineal. Beautiful colour pink. Yeah, this one has been fermenting in the garden in a pot for the last four years. Um, it wasn't as bright when I used it last time, but I think the longer that it's been in the in the tub, the uh, better the colour has got and the stronger it's got. So that's really nice. Um, I've also done turmeric dye, which is this one. Um, this has been over dyed. I did this as turmeric last year and the colour faded over a bit of time. So I thought that I would do it again. So that's that one. That's been really nice. Um, I've done ivy berries. Now this was a surprise because I thought that this one was going to be black. When I put the berries into the pan to cook, they were a burgundy colour. And I thought that I was going to end up with a lovely rich red. Um, and then once I cooked the berries, I left them to ferment overnight and added some alum. Um, and then went back to them the next day, recooked them again. And then the pot went black and I thought, oh, it's going to be a horrible black colour. Um, but then when I strained out the berries and put the wool in with some more alum, I got this beautiful blue colour. There you go. Now that was a lovely surprise because I didn't think I was going to like the colour but I really really do love this colour. Um, it seems to be developing with age um, but I do think it's a beautiful beautiful blue colour and I've got some of the dye bath left so I thought that I would have another go and see if I can alter the colour by putting some different um, modifiers in the pan. I achieved a few different blues I've got two light and three and those dark um, but they all came out of the same pan so I'm not quite sure why that's happened why I've ended up with a, a lighter colour than a dark colour um, but yeah I'm very pleased with the colours and how they turned out the next one I did was yellow onion skin now this again was a surprise because I've ended up with different colours out of the same dye pot I think that's it no there's the other one I ended up with four different colours out of the same pan, out of the same wardens. They were all cooked at the same time and I've ended up with those colours. Now I'm really pleased with these and I don't know if I could achieve the same again. Um, I'm not too sure whether it's something to do with this wool that's caused those colours because that wool and those colours are the same wool and yet again I've ended up with two different two different shades. So I really don't know why I ended up with so much variety of colour out of the one pan. But I have to say I'm not sure I could get the same again. But I'm willing to try. I enjoy experimenting in the garden. I enjoy experimenting with plants because you never know what you're going to get. But that was a real surprise. Um, this one, this one here, was red onion skins. Now this was a mistake because I added citric acid instead of adding alum to this pot and um, I ended up with this lovely golden green colour. Now again, I'm not sure I could get the same colour again. I'll have, I will have a go because I do have some more red onion skins in the kitchen to try 
um, but these I had a lot of the red onion skin in the pan this time and I did add quite a bit of citric acid by mistake thinking I was doing acid dyes again and uh, yeah I've ended up with that beautiful gold yeah it's not going to come back into focus so that was that was nice I also did dandelion flowers this year which is that it's going to focus the sun's shining quite brightly so it's, the camera's not picking the colours up properly but that was daffodil flowers and I really enjoyed that last year um, I dyed a skirt with it because I enjoyed it so much the colour that I thought I would dye a skirt that I had so it does work on cotton there you go there's the colour and it seems to radiate the sunshine when the sun shines on it it does seem to glow really really brightly so that that's been really nice as well uh, for some reason this one came out a bit darker than the other two oops sorry can't really tell the difference on the camera while the sun's shining but yeah I really do enjoy that colour I think it's a beautiful colour and I love using them so I'll definitely use them again again next year that was daffodil flowers um, the next one was dandelion and again I'm finding the variety of wool texture that I use alters the colours as well for some reason uh, so that right. is that's that one and then that's that one now I'll put them together see if you can see any difference in the colour there you go so that was dandelion flowers out of the uh, roads off the roadside and it turned out a nice yellow it's not as bold as the daffodil which you can see slightly there's a difference in colour there um, but the, the colour is still quite nice it's still a nice soft yellow not as bright and vibrant as the other yellow but I still love it I use, I'll use it again next year because I just think it's a wonderful colour don't know whether you can tell the difference so that's that one now this one again was a surprise I decided to try elderflower leaves this year I've not used them before um, I'm always trying to get a green because dyers should know that it's very difficult to get a really good green when you're using plants. Um, but I managed, by surprise, to get green. I don't know whether you can see that green. I managed to get a good green. Um, it's a bit Kermit the Froggy. But I did the yellow first. That yellow. I did that first and then I put one back in and I added some tin this time as a modifier and I've got green there you go now for me it's very similar to a blade of grass the colour and I love it absolutely love it not sure I could get the same green again but I'm willing to have a try um, it is an absolutely beautiful colour next to that yellow it's beautiful just sorry the sunlight is so strong all of a sudden now I've begun filming but yeah I definitely use that again because I think it's beautiful absolutely beautiful and then this one I put in as an exhaust in the same dye pot and I've got some nice soft yellows nice bit of yellow so that's the natural dyes as I say I've had great fun doing them I've ended up with a lovely range of colours let me see if I can get them all up to show you them I've ended up with some beautiful beautiful colours I've had great fun so I'll definitely do some more as soon as some more plants become available because at the moment as I say we've not got a lot of flowers um, sadly with the sunshine that we've been getting it's been so strong it's just put been sending all the flowers to seed so there's not really been an awful loss around 
um, but I do really enjoy doing them. I've managed to get hold now of some cream of tartar so I'm going to try adding that into the dye pot before I put the wool in because I believe that makes the colour stronger so if I try that in the next few days I will let you know what the colours turn out like. Anyway that's the end of the natural dyes section of the video. I thought as well that I would share with you a couple of things, other things that I've been up to. Um, I've been doing some acid dyes, excuse the rustling. These are Cotswold locks. Those. Lovely orange colour. I like experimenting to see what the colours are going to turn out like. And these are blue face lasto. That's just two colours in the one pot. And that was a few different ones. There you go. So that was that. I've also been doing some knitting. Um, I've started the Kate Davis Happenstance Shawl. So this is, is that. Um, I'm doing it in Gotland, which is hand spun yarn. Uh, excuse me a second, I'm just about to drop a stitch. Yeah, I'm doing it in some Gotland hand spun yarn. You can see. I've done all the increase rows on the garter stitch and now I'm up to the decrease rows to take it all the way back down to one stitch again and then there's a lace pattern on the bottom. Uh, I do love Kate Davis patterns, they're so easy to follow, so easy to knit um, and I also love Gotland. Gotland is a wonderful wool to use, a wonderful wool to spin and I'd highly recommend spinning it. Um, it's warm, it's cosy, it's robust, uh, it can be a bit itchy when it's around the neck here but uh, I love it, I just think it's a wonderful wonderful wool to use because even in the spring you can still wear it and even though it's chunky it's still quite light to wear even when it's a little bit warmer in our spring weather here in Wales and um, so it also feels quite bouncy, quite springy so that's really nice, I do really enjoy using that. I'm also knitting it on uh, Knit Pro needles, interchangeable needles. I won't use anything else. I think they are wonderful needles. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but uh, I do love my Knit Pro needles. So that's really fun because that's something I can do in this hot weather and it's not a big project to have lying around, uh, but that's the Gotland. Yeah, that's the Gotland yarn that I've spun by hand. Next is what I called my um, lockdown cal. It's a crochet blanket that I've been doing. Um, I started it the day the lockdown started when I first went into lockdown and I thought that I would finish it once the lockdown ends. So this is my lockdown blanket. As you can see there's plenty of colour in it. There's also some uh, natural dyed yarn in it and some hand spun yarn in it as well. Um, I've got some Jacob in there, I've got some Hebridean in there. This blue here, this one, that was indigo and an indigo exhaust bath that I did. Um, this one here was some acid dyes that I did. I've also got some Shetland in this as well. Uh, so yeah, it's been a really enjoyable project because it's one of those things that I can just pick up and put down again. I'm using all sorts of scrap yarn that I've had lying around from other projects that I was doing. Um, so it's been a good way to use up the stash and get rid of things that have just been taken up space in the house. Uh, I always find crochet blankets are good for that because it just means you're getting rid of things that you wouldn't ordinarily use and you don't know what to use. So that's the uh, Jacob, this one here. It was a black Jacob, black and white. And um, there's all sorts of mohair in there as well and a bit more Gotland as well here. So, and this one here, this blue and this purple is um, alkanet and indigo as well. So that's been really fun, really enjoyable. 
yeah that's the end of all the fiber stuff that i have for you today it's only a short video just to introduce myself and just really to get myself accustomed with the camera and talking to you on camera i hope you've enjoyed some of the things that you've seen um and um, but yeah we've been having fun because the sun's been out most of the time so we've been able to get out for walks and get out in the garden i spent plenty of time with the hens uh, spent time in the garden spinning and as I've shown you I've done plenty of dyeing as well natural dyes and acid dyes so it's been good fun I've also got a start in the vegetable garden which is where I am at the moment uh, so yeah it's been really enjoyable it's been good to see the season change and the swallows come back and the cuckoos being around as well so that's been really lovely being able being nice just being able to sit and relax and just enjoy the Welsh countryside um, because you don't often get a chance to do that when it's raining here because often when it rains it just rains and rains and rains so you don't get much chance to sit outside so that's been lovely uh, anyway i just thought i would just come along and say hello and introduce myself and i'm hopefully going to be back in the next couple of weeks if you do like my channel please like and subscribe and i'll be happy to uh, put out more content for you within the next couple of weeks bye for now mm.